How's it going Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm at Still Austin with Josh and we've got a special still to show you today. Welcome to Still everyone, I'm Jesse and this is the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation. Today we're getting a little bit of a behind the scenes tour with Josh from Still Austin and we're going to be talking about this still here. Home distillers, you know about uh, perf plates, bubble plates, bubble caps, those sort of things, but this is a little bit different. What sort of still is this, Josh? This is a continuous still. Woo! Mm -hmm. Which is pretty sexy. We don't get a lot of that in the home distilling world. So I think we can get up a little higher. Maybe we can see it from there, because look at this, guys. Hold on. we've come up uh, two stories right mm -hmm. two stories and we're at the point where they pump the beer into the still and uh, there's something kind of interesting about it the, the reason it's called a continuous still I'll let Josh tell you about that you actually never really have to turn it off it's kind of designed much like a fluorescent light bulb where it will actually last longer the less that you turn it on and off it's the change in heat and temperature over time is what will actually cause the most wear and tear on it but um, what you can do is as long as you've got beer, you can keep running it. You can keep pumping as much as you want um, continuously. So if you have multiple fermenters full of beer, you can just keep pumping from another. Just keep going from fermenter to fermenter. Absolutely. Right now we have six fermenters and we typically do two fermenters in a day because we have a three day fermentation. And so we'll do two cooks in a day get our six that we're constantly rotating through. That said, if we needed to, we could do about six in one day if it was a 24 hour session. So we would have to triple our grain intake, our uh, production team, we'd have to have a lot longer days, um, but we could conceptually never turn it off. If we had even more grain fermenters. All right, so show us where the beer gets pumped in on the bin. So right here, there's these two Two pipes and this top one where the valve is open you can see the beer is pumped in right here right here these windows are blocked off because that's where the most pressure comes in the grain will come in and fill as it does it cascades down between each of these windows there is a series of plates that aren't completely flush on the inside it's much like Plinko where there's different levels in there so that the grain has to cascade down, slowing its fall. In the meantime, steam is pumped in the bottom and the temperature around here is gonna be around 180 to 190 degrees. And so that's the sweet spot for ev evaporating that alcohol out of it. A lot of it's gonna take the place of the steam as the steam is getting to a point where the heat isn't enough for the steam to stay gas. So the steam will actually turn into hot water and flush the grain back down. The alcohol that are actually gonna take its place and rise up higher. Then when you get up here, the alcohol is cooling as it gets further from the heat source. And so at each one of these trays, there's a different stratified level. These are called the rectifying trays. Um, oversimplifying a little bit, it's a plate with a bunch of holes in it that allows the alcohol to rise up through each one of those trays. At a certain point, it's gonna cool down enough to condense and turn back into liquid alcohol, and it's gonna come back down. It creates an equilibrium so that what's happening on each one of those trays is a condensation that's the same, it's consistent. From this point up, guys, we, we're pretty familiar with this. This is essentially a, a bubble plate, or a, actually it's more like a perf plate. It's a plated still. The magic is that the beer is pumped in just underneath it, essentially. You have the stripping trays sitting underneath, which means that there's no actual boiler sitting under the, the still, which means you can just keep pumping that beer on in. There is another thing that's quite interesting about this. You don't make your cuts with time 
as your vector, right? Correct. You've got a different way to make cuts, and I know a couple of you are asking about that. So let's uh, let's check that out. So when you look at these different valves, there's a different type of condensation on each one. Conceptually, you can imagine it's hotter down here than it is at the top. So we have this calibrated such that if we were to open the top one, which you can see is open, you pull right out of the middle of the heart. It's very neutral, it's really clean, um, it's without tails, essentially. Further down, where it's hotter and closer to the heat source, there's more of that tail. So if you were to open the bottom one, you can almost pull straight tails out of it. So what this does is it gives us the ability to set the amount of tails we like it. So when you're using a pot still, and you first cut out the heads, and then you have your heart, and then you choose how much of the tails to taste you would like to be included in there, we get to do that decision in real time. So what he's saying, guys, is that you're not gonna collect your heads or your four shots first, you're not gonna collect your tails last, you can literally just keep running the still, and because you, because you keep running the still, there is no real start or finish to the run, as far as heads and tails are finished. The higher you go up the column, the closer you are to your heads, the further down the column you go, the closer you are to your tails. So if you're running a vodka, I'm assuming you're, you're essentially pulling from the second or third plate from the top. Up at the top. And that's pretty much all they take. If however you're making a bourbon that's going into a barrel for a while, they'd, they'd keep coming down to different plates. Right. It's pretty freaking cool. And you can change it depending on what you're doing. So if you'll look, you can see that some of these valves are open and some are shut. So right now, one, 10, and 12 are open valves, which means that we're getting heart with a degree of tails included in it. Now we can change that. If the taste changes, the grain varies, the fermentation varies, everything varies. So you can come up and switch a couple things. You can get a different extraction at each level. You could do plate two for the first half and then finish on plate seven, or open three at the same time. You can pull different flavors out, so it gives you the chance to influence what's coming out without having to stop. It's also much more energy efficient. Because we're just pumping steam in, the steam is reclaimed. As the water drops back down to the bottom, the heat of the steam will actually allow it to re-vaporize. So you don't have to add as much water, as much heat. It's designed to hold temperature stably, and so it's much more energy efficient as well. Over time, the tails will keep going up and down, right, as they liquefy and they evaporate. So over time, the molecular structure of them will start to break down, and you'll actually turn some of those tails into heart. And so you can reclaim some of those. So that is really freaking cool, but I have to ask, uh, you're gonna end up with a whole lot of stuff down the bottom that you, you don't want. And it's gotta go somewhere, right? Absolutely. We're back down the bottom now, and uh, from here you can see just how freaking tall this thing is. How, how tall actually is it, and how many plates do you have? We've got 24 stripping trays, 12 uh -huh. rectifying trays, and she's 42 feet tall. Woo! But there's a condenser that double checks, and also a warming tank that's about eight feet above. So wow. we call her Nancy, uh, named after a character from a 1950s sci-fi movie called Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. Um, in the character, uh, Nancy grows to be King Kong size and kind of tears up the town. We mentioned that there's products down here that's got to go somewhere. Yeah. All, uh, what happens down here, man? All of the grain as it keeps sliding down, remember it's evaporating a lot of the water out of it because of the heat of it, but it kind of turns into this sort of like a sludge, uh, we, what we call spent grain. As it comes down through, it'll come through this pipe, and this little pump moves it all up through this and out across to a silo on the other side of the building where we give it to local farmers for free. That is freaking cool. So not only is the, the grain being used to turn into the best thing it could possibly be, which is spirits, then uh, the farm animals get to use it as well. I'm sure the farmers love that. Oh, they do. <laughs>
I have to say a huge thank you to the Patreons. The only reason I get to do this is because of them. And I know I, I say it in every video, but I do that because it's important to me. Uh, the Patreons look after me so I can look after everyone else and get this kind of content out to you. So thank you. I appreciate it. All right, so you guys are doing awesome things here at Still Austin. Uh, I've tried some of your spirits, they're great. Do you want to let people know where they can find you physically and also on social media or whatever? Definitely. Find us at stillaustin.com. We're also all over uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, the things. Um, we are all over the place. Now that said, right now, because we're still such a, a young company, our product is only available in Texas, but we're coming nationwide very soon. Um, our bourbon just was distributed far enough out to hit the central, the whole state of Texas, and our gin is spreading into cities all around you. So, please keep an eye out for us. Uh, the gin, the bourbon, we've got all kinds of other crazy things that we're cooking up, uh, four grain and rye and single malt and all kinds of things. So, keep your eye out. And you guys are also on the whiskey trail. So, if you are a member or you're thinking about being a member, make sure you come in and check these guys out. Um, you, you run tours for the public too, right? Absolutely. Yeah, we do about 15 tours a week. Um, it's very easy to shoot us an email at tours at stillaustin.com and we'll get you a time, get you in, show you how it all works, you know? They'll look after you. All right, guys, I've had a blast doing this. I hope you enjoyed it too. If you did enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below, and I'll catch you next time, guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya. Thanks.